if you want. <laughs> I'm coming, Lord. I'm coming, Lord. By myself. All by myself. But you can look for me. You can look for me. And don't call the road. Don't call the road. I get there. I get there. I'm coming, Lord. By myself. All by myself, but you can look for me. You can look for me, and don't call the road. Don't call the road, I get there. I may be blind. I may be blind. I cannot see. I cannot see. But you can look for me. You can look for me, and don't call the road. Maybe cripple. I may be crippled. I may not walk no more. I walk. But you can look for me. You can look for me. And don't call the road. Call the road. I'm coming low. I'm coming low. By myself. All by myself. But you can look for me. I may be blind. I may be blind. I cannot see. I cannot see. But you can look for me. You can look for me. And don't call the road. Don't call the road I'm coming long. I'm coming long. By myself. But you can look for me. I may be crippled. I may be crippled. I may not walk no more. I may not walk. But you can look for me. You can look for me. And don't call the road. Don't call the road. Till I get there. I'm coming low. I'm coming low. By myself. All by myself. You can look for me. You can look for me. And you can look for me. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. The choir was singing as we came in, singing, everybody ought to praise the Lord. Amen. Everybody ought to praise the Lord. And they said, I'm coming, Lord. You can look for me. But until we get there, we ought to just keep praising the Lord, right? Yeah. Praise our way until we get there. Amen? Amen. 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 God is great, and he is greatly to be praised. Amen. Father God, in your son Jesus' name, Lord, I come before you this morning, God, thanking you for your goodness and your mercy, God, thanking you for a reasonable portion of health and strength on this morning, God, on this day, Lord, just given another opportunity to celebrate you, Lord. Father, thanking you for all that you have done, God, you blessed us and, blessed us and kept us all week, God, from danger seen and unseen, God. Lord, you had your hands upon us early this morning when you woke us up. 
Lord, you touched our bodies and some of us weren't even able to get up out of the bed, God, but you allowed us to get up and come to your house one more time to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we ask that you would, Lord, have your way in the service. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come in. You are welcome in this place to do what you want to do. Have your way. Take free course and reign throughout this place as even as the worshipers enter in let them feel the love and the presence of the Holy Spirit as they walk into those doors this morning God Lord I ask that you will saturate this place with your love and your spirit go into the aisles move in and out of the pews oh God yes Lord Father even when we leave this place God we ask that you will still go with us and keep us God but most of all, I ask that we don't leave this place the same way that we've come. Yes. But God, if there's anyone that don't know you today, God, begin to prick their hearts, oh God. Father God, knock on the doors of the people that sit here that don't know you, Jesus. Father, that they'll come running and say, what must I do to be saved? In the name of Jesus, we ask that you use our pastor as he bring forth a word from heaven. In the name of Jesus, and we say amen. 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 We are now going to have a hymnal. We're going to have a congregation hymn of praise. Everybody stand and sing along. <laughs> if you would stand, they want you to stand while they sing this hymnal of praise. Amen. Come on and praise him. Praise him. praise him. His name is Jesus. Jesus. Blessed Savior. Savior. Oh, he's worthy to. Come on and praise him. You all too. For waking you up. For getting you here safely. His name is Jesus. Jesus. Blessed, Savior. Blessed Savior. Oh, he's worthy to. From the rising of, the rising of, of the sun, the sun until the goal. The He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. Jesus. Oh, he's worthy to. Come on and praise him. When you're all alone. When you're on your job. Come on and his name is Jesus, Jesus blessed, Savior. blessed Savior. Oh, he's worthy to. He's worthy to be From the rising up, the rising up the sun, until, until the going down the sun. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. You just come on and praise him. You all too. Praise him. Come on and praise him. Praise him. Praise him. His name is Jesus. Jesus. Blessed, Savior. Blessed Savior. 
He's worthy to be praised from the rising. Praise him, praise him. You ought to praise him. His name is Jesus. Blessed Savior. He's worthy to be. she talking about on this morning but God kept you all week long he kept you from danger seen and unseen when you didn't know what you were going to do God kept you in the midst of it all up and down the highways to and from oh he kept your children while they were out in the streets he kept you on your jobs he kept you in the midst of it all that's a reason to give him a praise a unconditional a radical praise a radical praise i said oh come on y'all can just wave your hands just wait it's a sign of surrender it's a sign of surrender just wave your hands just tell god that you love him on this morning oh to god be the glory for the things that he has done he is worthy to be praised. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. As we moving into our service right now, we're going to have um, a scripture reading. And then you can find it on the back of your programs. And if you could remain standing... I'm going to read the mission, you'll read the vision, we'll do the mission together. Then Jesus came and spoke to them, saying that all, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. To become people who are spiritually, mentally, financially, and physically empowered to empower others in this community and abroad. We shall be recognized as the chosen people of God, that we operate as the head and not the tail, the lender and not the borrower, and ultimately the royal priests and ambassadors of Christ that God has placed in the earth to reflect his glory. In order to fulfill the great commission and the vision that is before us, we will intentionally strive to die to our will daily in order that the will of God may be done in our lives. We will meditate on God's word, pray without ceasing, and show unconditional love which will empower us to reach others and share the life and the love of Jesus Christ wherever the Holy Spirit leads. Amen. Amen. We're now going to have prayer. and I'm going to ask Deacon Exum if he would come and lead us in morning prayer. That's all right. That's all right. Amen. Truly, God is good. Amen. All the time. Yes, he has brought us from mighty long ways. 
up to the present time. And we just want to thank you this morning. Yes. Give God some praise for what he's done. Yes. Most holy and almighty God. We come this morning as dumb as we know how. Thank you, our Father, for our early childhood up until now. Father, we thank you for all you have done. We thank you for that you're going to do. Father, you touched us this morning with a fan of love. Open our eyes so we can see another day that you have made. And Father, we want to rejoice and be glad in this day. Father, we ask you to just bless this waiting congregation. Bless our pastor this morning that's going to bring the word. Bless his family. And bless all the auxiliaries of the church and all those that we're doing that bound to pray for. Yeah. Father God, we just thank you for everything you've ever done. Father, we thank you once, we thank you twice. Father, we thank you all our life. Father, we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Deacon Exum. We are now uh, moving right along into our service. We're going to have another. We're going to have another selection from the choir. And following that, we're going to prepare for the word. Amen? Amen. Amen? And I know that sometimes we get a little tired from all week long, you know, in the hustle and the bustle of the week. And we feel like when we get here on Sunday, like, oh, I'm just going to sit down. But I invite you to get into the service. I invite you to open up and worship and magnify the Lord with us in this morning. Because what you put in is what you get out. So if you say, well, church was just all right today, then it was just church for you. But I invite you to magnify the name of the Lord because God is worthy of the praise. Amen? So after the choir, the next voice that you will hear will be none other than our pastor, the Reverend Tracy Bell. And we are believing and looking for a word from on high this morning. Amen? I don't know about you, but I need a word on this morning. So we come with a heart of expect expectancy. Expecting, ex expecting, can't get it out, expecting God to bring a word on this morning. And we know that he will. Amen? Amen. Right. I shall not be moved. 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 I'm like a tree planted by planted by the water. You know that I shall not be I shall not be. I shall not be moved, Lord. I shall not be. I shall not be. I shall not be, Lord. I shall not be moved. I 
shall not be. I shall not be moved. I'm like a tree, like a, a planet by, planet, planet by, by the water. You know that I, I shall not be moved. I shall not be. I shall not be Lord, I, I shall not be moved. I shall not be. I shall not be Lord. I shall not be. I shall not be moved. I'm like a tree, like a, tree. a planet by, planet, planet by the water. Oh, you know that I, I shall not be moved. I shall not be. I shall not be moved. I started not with Jesus moved. alone. A time ago, I promised him I follow him wherever he'd go. I'm glad he loves me and I love I love him so you know that I I should not be Lord I I should not be I shall not be. I shall not be moved. I, I'm like a tree, like a, tree. a planet by, planet, planet by, by the water. You know that I, I shall not be moved. I shall not be. I shall not be. Lord, I, I shall not be moved. I shall not be. I shall not be. Lord, Not be. I shall not be moved. I'm like a tree, like a tree. planted by, planted, planted by, by the water. Oh, you know that I, I shall not be moved. I shall not be. I shall not be moved. Some may say a uh, this song be moved. is too old for me to sing, be but this song. It's not as old as God. God don't change. I'm going to keep on singing this song and praising. In Jesus' name, you know that I I shall not be. Lord, I I shall not be. Lord, I I shall not be. I shall not be I'm like a tree, like a, tree. a planet by, planet, planet by, by the water. You know that I, I shall not be moved. I shall not be. I shall not be Some may say uh, this song be is too old for me to sing, but this song. It's not as old as God. God don't change. I'm going to keep on singing this song and praising. In Jesus' name, oh, you know that I, I shall not be. Lord, I, I shall not be. Lord, I, I I shall not be moved. I'm like a tree, a planet by, planet by the water. You know that I I shall not be. Lord, I I shall not be. I shall not be. Lord, I I shall not be. I shall not. I shall not be I'm like a tree, a planet by, planet by the water. You know that I shall not be I shall not be Lord, I shall not be I shall not be Lord, I I shall not be 
I'm like a tree, a planted by, planted by the water. You know that I, I shall not be moved. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just wanted to, 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 to briefly just um, touch on that song. I shall not be moved like a tree planted by the rivers of the waters. I shall not be moved. On yesterday, um, we funeralized my great aunt. She was 104 years old. And I sat under her for almost 24 years and she imparted so much wisdom in me. But one of the things that she said that touched me and I began to sit here and almost start to sob because she said years ago that my great grandfather Stonington High used to line them up, all nine children at the door and touch every one of them and, and, and pray over them and say and he and she and he and she shall be planted by the rivers of the waters well, and, and they shall bring forth fruit in their due season. He just touched them every morning every morning before they walked out of the door. So she kept saying, don't you be moved. Don't you be moved. Whatever you do, don't you be moved. And the choir already said it. I shall not be moved. So I say to you today, whatever you're going through, don't be moved. No matter what it looks like, don't be moved. No matter what you're feeling like, don't be moved. Be like the tree planted by the rivers of the water. Glory, 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 Get a little volume. Can I get a little volume, Chris, please? Just a little volume. A little volume so I don't hurt myself. Good word, Evangelist Solomon. That's actually uh, uh, the text I'll be coming from at the 3 o'clock service on today. Uh, Psalm 1. Blessed is the man. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done. Amen. Pray with me. Lord God, now we look into the hills from which cometh our help. For all of our help, it comes from you, God. If there was ever a time that we needed you, we sure do need you now. God, you saw the news before it even came on CNN and MSNBC and Fox. You, you saw it. Nothing caught you by surprise but we're still shocked and in awe of what's taking place in our cities and not just with the police but even at our own front door at times so we your people we gather together in your presence and we simply ask you to have mercy on us smile on us God and help us Make us what you will have us to be. So that we can give glory and honor to you. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Let the church say, Amen. 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 Those of you um, that were not in our 8 o'clock service, uh, Minister Tim brought us such a powerful word earlier on today. I was... Still bless off that word. The scripture's already been read in your hearing. Oh, it has not been read? Oh, what y'all read? I thought things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Well, let me give it to you. Second Corinthians chapter 5. It's in your, it's located in your book. And please stand with me. 
We also welcome them, those that are watching us by way of Ustream on today. God bless you tremendously. And if you want to, next Sunday you can get a look closer. 4307 Old Pool Road. Amen. 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 Closer you get, the hotter it gets. Amen, somebody. Amen. Responsive reading, I will begin. You will follow in the bold print. And it reads, And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Read. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Together, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God bless you. You may have your seats. Amen. I want to uh, talk uh, to you from the subject of release to represent. We, we, we discussed this a, uh, a bit on 8 o'clock on last Sunday, and I'll build on it a bit. God has built on it a little a bit through me. Uh, I'm going to talk about, uh, I've been released, amen, come on, yes. to represent, yes. because I'm an, I'm an ambassador, yes. y'all are looking at an ambassador, yes. amen, I'm a representative, yes. Pastor Corner K, yes. I have been, and you have been, if you're a believer, if you're saved, if you're born again, you have been released, listen, from death row. I'm not the only one that was on death row. Home my way straight to hell. And then Christ stepped in, Mother Searles. Come on. And he said, I got this. Amen. And I was guilty. I, I don't know about anybody else. But I was dead wrong. On death row. And he released me. In spite of me. Yes. And he didn't do anything wrong. Right. He said, I got this. Right. And he covered me. He covered himself with my sins. Because somebody had to pay the price. Right. Someone had to die. God couldn't change that. Yes. Someone had to pay the price for my sins yes. in order for me to be made right with God. Yes. Y'all remember what took place around 9.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wednesday, June 17th this year. Yeah. About nine people, it was actually about a dozen, had gathered together down in Charleston for Bible study. Started off with prayer. And they're talking about Jesus. And of course, they had an unexpected visitor, and he was welcomed with arms wide open. His name was Dallin Roof. And by the end of the Bible study, I understand that the young man stood up and had a Glock, y'all, yeah. with hollow points. Mm -hmm. And when they hit you, they explode. They, 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 they were designed to make sure they kill what they hit. Yeah. And when he finished, I understood that there was one that he intentionally didn't kill because he wanted to leave someone to tell the story what happened. He tried to put the gun to his own head. He did and pulled the trigger, but it was out of bullets. But see, that was a setup by God. Because God was setting something up for this thing. The pastor of the church, he intentionally asked for him, the Reverend Clementa Pickney. 41 years old, also a congressman in the state of South Carolina, 
a state senator, the senior pastor of Mother Emmanuel, married to Jennifer Benjamin, father of two children. Did you know his wife was actually there at the church as well? Just not there in the Bible study. He was killed. Cynthia Hurd, 54 years old, a year older than I, a 31-year employee who managed the John L. Dart Library for 21 years. Just talking about Jesus, y'all. Ain't mess with nobody, just happy in Jesus. Pow. Reverend Sharonda Coleman Singleton, 45 years old, a speech therapist and also a high school girls track and field coach, Goose Neck, Goose Creek High School. She was also AKA um, sister, yeah, her sister, um, no, Monette. Tawanza Sanders, 26 years old. He was a 2014 graduate in business administration. Killed in cold blood. They knew him as Ty. There was Ethel Lance, 70 years old. Let me say 70 years young for some of you all in here. She had tended it, Mother Emmanuel for most of her life and worked there as a custodian as well. It was Susie Jackson, 87 years old. They're on the screen, ministers, as, as we talk about them. 87 years old, Lance's cousin, a, a longtime church member. Sending Bible study, talking about Jesus. Minding her own business, just happy in Jesus. The pain militant doctor, 49 years old. A mother of four, and she's saying in the choir, y'all. Reverend Daniel Simmons, 74 years old, a former pastor, now one of the associate pastors at Mother Emmanuel. Simmons initially survived the attack, but later on he died at the hospital. Grandchildren and children. Myra Thompson, 59 years old, the wife of Reverend Anthony Thompson, who was uh, not even in the state, wasn't even there. When his wife was shot down in cold blood. But what's so strange about this thing is once they caught this young man in uh, North Carolina, Shelby, North Carolina, you guys, y'all saw the news? Um, and at, I guess, the preliminary arraignment, um, when they brought him before the cameras, uh, Mr. Roof and, and, the, and the, uh, the family members had the opportunity to uh, speak to him one by one. They said, I forgive you. You took something precious from me, but I'm going to release you. Are y'all hearing me? You hear me, Reverend Taylor? You know, you, you, you know. You hurt me. You took my mother. You took my grandmother. You took my father. You took our pastor. I forgive you one by one. God forgives you. As deep as this hurt was, for no reason outside of what they're saying, it was a hate crime. And he began to even hurl uh, racial slurs as he was shooting them multiple times. Five or eight different clips he reloaded to make sure he did this. And Dylan said he didn't want to do this because they were so nice to him. He wanted to have a change of heart, but he said, I, I got to do it because they're taking over our country. I forgive you. Hate won't win. There's a scripture in Matthew chapter 6. After Jesus teaches his disciples the Lord's Prayer. And after he says amen, he goes on and he says, If you forgive 
those who have trespassed against you, your Father will also forgive you. But if you don't, neither will your Father forgive them. I'm going to give you a couple of different translations in a moment. But what I really want to talk about is, is how bad did it hurt what they did to you? I know we've been there before, you know, over and over and over again. And I will leave you guys alone, but God keep bringing me back there because someone hasn't released. Where you at? You haven't released. So we can't really have church till we learn to release the alt, the fault. I heard what you say. Well, Pastor Bell, well, how can you forgive someone who haven't even asked for forgiveness? Well, my Bible said, yet while we were sinners... Is it in your Bible? As a matter of fact, Dylan Roof never said he was sorry for nothing he did. But what they said on the monitor was, I forgive you. God forgives you. I release you. How could they have the pain, the power, Reverend Rice? How could they have the audacity to release someone who has took someone from them that was so vital in their life? They were probably looking forward to birthdays and celebrations and Thanksgiving and Christmases and, and all types of things. But in a twinkling of an eye, you, you would think the church is just one of the safest places that you could be at. You would think so. The house of God. And the pastor? Does anyone fear God anymore? So get them in your mind real quick, just for a moment, as, as we go into the scripture. Who it is that you have not yet released? I heard you. I just heard you. Pastor Bell, you just don't know what they did to me. You just don't know how deep the pain was. You don't know. You weren't there. I wasn't. But someone was there. He saw the infraction. He probably felt the pain because he took their sins to the cross as well. So in uh, 1984, in July, I was 22 years old. I was in the Navy. There was also a young lady who was 22 years old. She was, uh, I think, a senior at Elon College in Burlington. And she was asleep in her bed on this particular night in July. And she was awakened at about 3 a.m. in the morning. And someone has broken into her room and have a neck to her throat. And she's terrified. And, and she tells this assailant to take anything he wants. And my car, my money, my credit cards. And he said he didn't want any of that. And she said she knew immediately what he wanted. Well. And so he began to rape her. And somehow, some way, uh, in the midst of it, she found the strength. Her name was Jennifer Thompson. She just so happened to be a white female. She found the strength to focus on every detail of his face because she was, she was set to get him. Amen. To be able to give, if she lived through this rape, she was determined to be able to give the authorities a detailed description of who it was that did this. Uh, somehow she gets away, uh, she makes him, she befriends him, and I think she says she's going to the kitchen or, or something, and, and she gets away, gets to the neighbor house. Long story short, um, there's a lineup, and a young man uh, by the name, he's 22 years old as well at the time, uh, by the name of Ronald Cotton, is picked out of the lineup. And she's sure that it's, it's Ronald Cotton. And eventually he goes to court and eventually Ronald Cotton is found guilty. She makes a, a positive identification that this is the man that raped me. And over the course of years, Ronald Cotton, he, he's uh, adamant that it was not him that did it. But she is sure that this is the man that raped me. So he ends up getting a life sentence. And by this time, he's He's taken to Central Prison, where I end up working at. And I met him for myself. I didn't know what he did. Just seemed like a real nice guy. Really did. 
And he gets a couple of turns back to court, but he's still found guilty, Ronald Cotton. Eventually, 10 years later, DNA proves that it wasn't Ronald Cotton. Jennifer Thompson says on CNN and on Oprah and all of these shows that her prayer every night was God let him be raped and killed in prison. And he didn't even do it. Have you ever held anyone, I wonder, guilty of something that they didn't even do it? Because y'all didn't actually have a conversation about this thing. You just hearsay or you just assume. But if the real truth is known, the real culprit behind this flesh that you see, because it really ain't the flesh, Amen. evangelist, that, uh, Reverend Davis, it really ain't the flesh. Because we don't really wrestle against flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness in high places. And Satan is the real enemy usually behind all of this that, that, we, that we see. We see the flesh, but Satan is the culprit. So she finds it in her heart and she, and she asks him to meet with them and they meet um, at a church and she can't even find the words to say how sorry she is for the 10,000 plus days that he served in prison for something that he didn't do. And she says this to him. She says, how could you ever forgive me? And he said, I forgave you while I was doing time. <laughs> they end up co-writing a book together entitled Picking Cotton. Picking Cotton because she picked cotton out of the lineup. I wonder how often we erroneously pick the wrong person who hurt us. Ain't nobody mad at the devil because we're busy mad at each other. Of course, we do say the devil made us do it. He, he didn't make us do it. We were just available. <laughs> we were just available because I had not submitted myself to prayer and meditation. And, and, and I haven't found out just how to forgive. Well, in our scripture on today, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I want to go through these real quickly and find how these individuals could find the strength and the power and the wisdom to release someone from the debt that they felt was owed to them. I want to help you on today. God, God desires to help you on today to come out, out of the bondage. Because look, because when you, re listen, when you release someone, what you really do is release yourself. I'm going to tell you, look, uh, uh, hate and unforgiveness will take you out. Yeah. It will take you down. Yeah. It'll kill you. Yeah. You're trying to figure out why you got high blood and this and that and hypertension. Let them go. Yeah. Release them. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Yeah. As intentional as you feel, feel that it was, release them. Let's start at the very first, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 15. First point God wants us to understand is that Jesus died for everyone. It says, and he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Jesus died for everybody. He didn't die just for you, Amen. Reverend Davis, and for you, Evangelist Jonah. He died for everyone. That's good news. Because some of us had some sins that Clorox and, and, and Whiteout just couldn't do nothing with. Just too dirty, too nasty, too filthy. And it's not like it was a mistake. We did it Friday and next Friday and Friday after. Can't wait till I get paid so I can do it again. But yet with his, with his blood. He said, I'm going to erase this debt. I'm a, he died for everybody. Say that. Say, he died for me. Died. First thing, remember that. You should write that down. Jesus died for everybody. And just because you don't love everybody, well, you need to get over that. 
because he died for everybody. Your neighbor, he died for the Democrats, Republicans, Tea Party, Confederates, and anybody else you can think of. The Black Panthers, anybody else. You know, those over uh, the ISIS, he died for everybody. Say, he died for everybody. Therefore, verse 16, therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, Reverend Davis, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet we know him thus no longer. In other words, I must stop judging people. I got to stop judging people. Whether you got the American flag, the Confederate flag, or whatever kind of flag you got, or whether you got your middle finger up as a flag, I got to release you and stop judging everybody. You know, we as believers usually see, we just see the cover. We're just looking at the book cover of a person. Not really trying to get to know them. You know, not trying to figure out why they always got to be seen, always got to be heard, got to say something, got to do something, got to play that music, got to do something. Sit down. Here they come. Here they come. Here they come. Here she come. Always late. And we have no idea why they are the way they are because I never got took the time to try to get to know you and your story. I'm just reading the cover. Don't know you, don't want to get to know you, because from what I'm looking at, I don't like you. So you sit over there, and I'm going to sit at this pew over here on Interstate 40. Create some distance. We're rolling. Verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Point number three, I must stop living in the past, but in my present en route to my future. I got to stop living in the past. You know, the Bible says the old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. But some of us love to live in the past of what someone did. And all things, I have to remember this. I can't keep living like I used to live. Now that I'm saved and born again, I can't smoke no more weed with you, Reverend. I'm saved now. I can't drink no more liquor with you. I can't go to the party. Those old things, though I still dwell in this fleshly body, that want to go to the club, want to get with you, want to do what we used to do, but I, it's all, I can't do that anymore. I can't, I, can't, I can't get in on your gossip anymore. I don't live like that anymore. I've been purchased. I've been bought. I'm a new creature. You need to get with somebody else. I don't do that no more. I love you. I pray for you. But I got some new friends to love Jesus like I do now. Old things have passed away. Behold, old things are new. I'm a new creature. I'm a new creation. Yeah, I'm still walking around in this wretched old flesh. But now this old uh, spirit that I was, it's been rejuvenated, it's been renewed uh, because it's come in contact and, and fellowship, yes, and fellowship that of my creator. Yes. Can't do that with you no more. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm going to stop going on my shopping sprees with you. <laughs> For the people that don't do nothing. I'm going to cut back on the buffet with you at Golden Corral. I can't do that no more. I got some work to do. Oh. Pastor Bell got us working. I can't eat, girl, I can't eat like that no more, girl. We're on a fast. <laughs> Here we got revival coming out. It's nothing but bread and water this week, y'all. <laughs> I, have to, I have to change, we have to change our habits because I'm a new creature. Can't live like that no more. I'm, I'm on my way into my future, into my destiny. I must stop living in my past, but in my present, en route to my future. Somebody say he have a plan for you. The future, you got hope for you. Got big, God got big things in store for you. You better come on. Come out, come out from wherever you are. Over there hiding in that wine press. Trying to tread wheat. Verse 18. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. In other words, listen, listen, if you're born again, you got a ministry. You You don't need no pulpit. If he's saved you, listen, you in the ministry. (laughs) 
or you think you can still do a little bit of this and do a little bit. I'm telling you, you in the ministry. Amen. Or you might not know scripture right now like Deacon Peoples, so and you might can't pray like Evangelist Solomon, and you might don't stand up in his pulpit to hurl the gospel, but when you go to job, when you go to work tomorrow morning, you better tell somebody about Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. It says he died for you so he can reach through you and pull somebody else into the glory with you. He didn't die just for you. Yeah. Touch yourself and say, I'm in the ministry. That's right. You can tell somebody about it. <laughs> if they say, will you pass that? Say, just come to New Bethlehem. I'm in the ministry. Because <laughs> we're a body of believers. You have a ministry. Verse 20 says, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Christians are ambassadors. Christians are representatives of the kingdom of God. Therefore, I got to represent. You got to represent. Because you're an ambassador of God. You're an ambassador of Christ. We're ambassadors. You know, U.S. uh, ambassador over in whatever country you want to name, he's representing the United States. And he speaks as they speak. He's representing this country. He can't act like he want to act. Come on, y'all just missed that. Amen. You know, because he's going to get in trouble. He's going he, 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 he to lose his job. Look, don't, don't lose the position that God has in store for you because you want to step out of it. You know, you want to lay your Bible down and you're going to, you, you're a representative. You got to stop doing you. Oh, just one for the road, Cliff. Oh, you know how we're going to do it. So she got one more time. That ain't the way you represent. Y'all, how y'all do that, Nick? She got one more time. I can't do that, but you know. No, that's not representation of God. It's not representation of New Bethel. It's not representation of the one that died for you and hung for you and rose for you. That's not good representation. As a matter of fact, he said if someone offends you to forgive them 77 times over and over and over again. So what are you saying, Pastor Bell? Give them an opportunity to hurt me again? You talk to God about that. You, you, I, you talk to him about that. All I know is he said, forgive them 77. Over and over and over again. What he's really saying, as long as it take, as much as it take. Mm. I, I know you're not going to get there on today. But let's get there. Yeah. Let's, let's make an effort to get to where God will have us to be. We're ambassadors of Christ. Verse 21, he says, he, he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Let me read that again. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Point five again, I said it earlier, Jesus took my place on death row. Jesus Christ was treated like a sinner for my sins. He was was crucified for the sins that I did and the sins that you did. He died as though he did it, but he didn't do it. I did it, but he paid the price. What kind of mess is that? I did it, but he paid the price. I can't figure that out yet. It was me that drank it. It was me that smoked it. It was me in the hotel. But Jesus said, I'm going to pay the price. Because I need to release you and set you free so that you can go and release somebody else and set them free. Let me, can I give you a picture? Give me a reverend. Give me, give me a reverend. Let's say, come here, Floyd. Floyd always owed him somebody money. <laughs> come here. He always owed him somebody money. Now, I got Floyd by the neck. Because he won't give me my money. You know, you know this is scripture. It's a scripture about that. You know, where it was a parable, actually, where uh, the, 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 the guy that, that had all this stuff released someone of the debt. And then he goes out and gets somebody by the neck and throws him in jail. So I got Floyd by the neck. Cause, um, and, and I'm not going to forgive you. I don't like you. 
and I just and I just hope you get what's coming for you. Now get me. Now God. Now because I got him by the neck, God got me by the neck. That's right. Now hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me, and, and waiting for me. And now I'm out of fellowship with God. <laughs> Who said choking? <laughs> the baptism pool. <laughs> Y'all stop, 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 stop. Look. Now, 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 once we're born again, and once we're saved, and he forgives us for our sins, we have to continue to repent daily. Because we sin daily. And by doing this, this keeps our spirits clean and fresh, and it keeps us in fellowship with God. But the scripture says in Matthew chapter 6 that if you do not release or forgive, get me, if you don't forgive him, then I'm not going to release you and we're out of fellowship. And God is saying, I got a problem with you because you got a problem with somebody else that I died for. Now, if you want to stay out of fellowship with me, good. Now, now, now you're still in relationship with me because you accepted me as your Lord and Savior, but you're out of fellowship. Therefore, I cannot flow through you like I desire to because you keep doing you. Hey. Keep doing you. Who am I talking to? How bad was the pain? How bad was the hurt? How much do they owe you? How, were, how bad did the words hurt? God is saying, I want to have fellowship with you. I want to sup with you and dine with you. Not just on first Sundays when we have communion. I want to eat with you and dine with you. 24-7, 365. And I'm an ambassador of Christ. Amen. He's died for me. I can't even think anybody that I, I got an issue with that I refuse to forgive them. As a matter of fact, when I find out you got an issue with me, I'm coming to see you. I'm going to love the hell I love you. I said hell is in the Bible. Everybody stand to your feet. God want to set you free. That's all. That's all. I think if someone who said that someone raped them, but they didn't rape them, if she could, if he could forgive them before they even ask for forgiveness, why can't you? Someone whose loved ones was brutally shot down, cold blood murder, has asked for no forgiveness. What did they do? What did they do to you? Did they kill a family member? Did they rape you? They curse you out. I know, we, we've been over this over and over and over again. You watching by way of Ustream. What did an individual do to you? that causes you to refuse to release them. I know it's painful, but as I had said before, I bet nails in your hand would be more painful, and nails in your feet and be thrust in the side. I bet that would be more painful. But he died for everyone. He died for everyone in here. Any color you could come up with, he died for them. Ministers, if you just stand right here. Is there someone you need to release so that you can be in a right standing and fellowship with God again? Was it your husband or was it your wife that did it? Did he cheat on you? Did he spend up the bill money for crack? God said that he loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. If you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, you might know about him. You might know about a man that died and rose and all of this. But if you haven't received him in your heart, won't you come today? Would you consider Receiving him as your personal Lord and Savior on today. Just let him in. Just let him in. Just come. Just walk right down the aisle. And come on off death row. Just come. Look, you can come off death row today. 
All you got to do is just step out. Just step out. You can come right on off death row. You don't have to live like that. You can begin to represent if you release someone right where you are. I like that. That's good, Pastor. I'm redeemed. Bought with the price. Somebody already died for you. Mm, he's changed my whole life. Yeah, just come. Just, just come. He'll help you out. He'll, he'll help you clean you up. If anybody asks you just to guess who I am, tell them, tell them me. Tell them I am real. Sing that one more time and we're going to pray. I've been redeemed. I am redeemed. What will brought with the price? He gave his blood for your life. Jesus. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Tell pride to get out of the way. The day is my day to come off death row. Just say excuse me. Excuse me. They'll let you out. Just say excuse me. They'll let you out. They'll let you out. You don't have to keep coming to church. You can come as a as an ambassador, not as a sinner. Yeah. Tell them for me. Tell him. I am. Heads bow. Eyes closed. Continue to sing. God, we thank you for redeeming us. We thank you for releasing us to represent you. We thank you, God, for making us ambassadors, representatives of the kingdom of God. We didn't deserve it. We didn't earn it because we were guilty. But your son wasn't guilty. He was innocent. Didn't do a thing. Nobody took his life, but he laid his life down just to show the world how much he loved us. And now, God, I pray that someone who didn't find the courage to step out, that you'll find the love to step into them right where they are. And if they would just believe right where they are, that you are the son of the living God, you can redeem them right there, God. Do it for your glory. And we give you praise and glory and honor and praise and glory and honor and praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. 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 God bless you. Take your seats if you can. Sing it out. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together and a child shall lead them. Anybody ask you. Amen. Why do y'all come up on today? What do you want to do? Huh? Just to. Do you love God? Okay. Do you love God? Did he die for you? Me. Amen. He sure did. He died for our sins. And do you want him in your life? Okay. Well, I want you to repeat after me. Say, precious God. I believe that you died for me. If you see. And that you rose for me. Anybody. I'll receive you. That you yes, my Lord and my know me. Thank you, God. Tell them, Amen. I'm doing just fine. Little girl said they love God and they want Him in Tell their the life. Amen. And we walk through the prayer of repentance. Me. They said they ain't scared to represent. Amen. Amen. I wish we had more yeah. people that had childlike faith. Oh, what a church we would have if we had people with childlike faith. They just wanted to be loved. Amen. To God be the glory. Sing it out one more time. Sing it out. Sing it out. I've been redeemed. Can you stand and sing that with him? I've been redeemed. I What we Jesus has. Jesus. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. He's changed my whole life. If anybody ask you, anybody ask 
just to just who I am tell them for me tell him I am reading amen put your hands together amen back your hands Johnny To God be the glory. Yeah. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap for that word on today. Amen. 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 So right now, we've come to the part in the service where everybody can take place. Take part. I'm sorry. Amen. Take part. And that is, it's giving time. Amen. Amen. So we are going to continue on with our worship because giving is a worship too. Amen. So as you prepare for our tithes and offering, but Luke 6 and 38 says, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down. It says good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give unto your bosom, for with the same measure that ye meet withal, it shall be measured to you again. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I ask you to stand at this time, and you are now in the hands of the usher. I never met a man like Jesus before. I never met a man that can open any door. He can save, he can heal, and say, peace be still. I never met a man like Jesus before. I never met a man like Jesus before. I never met a man like Jesus before. No, I never. That can open any door. Now he can save. I never met a man like Jesus No, I never met a man like Jesus before. I said I never met a man like Jesus before. I never met a man that can open any door. Now he can save, he can heal and say, peace be still. I never met a man like Jesus. No, 